everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm going to start by sharing my screen. We've got um, a brief little PowerPoint um, to share with y'all just to help us navigate and keep us on track since we are um, at a 25 minute limit. Can you all see the PowerPoint just fine? Yep. All right. Well, um, let's get started by introducing ourselves. Lisa, I'll let you go first. Sure. Hey, everybody. I'm Lisa Clark, um, and I'm, well, you, you can see my long title there. But, <laughs> um, what, what I really do is um, I do a lot of um, outreach, and, and then I do the academic advising with the College of E-Tech for online degree programs. Um, and just very briefly, so if anybody's in here um, that it, well, you're all non-traditional, but uh, I went back to school um, as a 30-year-old um, to get my bachelor's degree. Had two kids, was single, and was having to work. So I completely understand what it's like um, to go to school um, under those kind of circumstances. And I was also a traditional student, um, you know, come, went straight out of high school, got an associate's degree. So I understand the differences between the two. Always here for a resource for you guys if you need anything or have any struggles like that. So, Sabrina. My name is Sabrina Billy, and I get to serve as the Assistant Director for Transfer Recruitment um, in our Office of Admissions and Student Recruitment. Um, and so for those of you who may be non-traditional and a transfer student, um, you know, you've got the perfect pairing between me and Lisa um, to help you navigate this process. Um, unlike, well, kind of like Lisa, I was a, a traditional student um, right out of high school. I went to my undergraduate institution for four years straight into a graduate program and then have been working full time um, since 2009. Um, and my role with um, admissions and working with transfer students is helping you all navigate um, that transition from your previous institution to Arkansas Tech. So um, for those of you who identify as non-traditional and transfer, um, you know, I'm also a great resource for you too and happy to help however I can. Um, so just some housekeeping items. Um, so for our, our agenda today, um, you know, we're going to talk about some next steps of what you can do now that you've been admitted to Arkansas Tech University. We're going to share some important offices um, that you will need to know and, and may um, need to reach out to um, as you're preparing um, and as you're a student here at Arkansas Tech. Um, we're going to talk about navigating some issues and, and problem solving, so how you can be prepared, um, you know, to be a, a good student and, and be sure to advocate for yourself um, when you need to. And then we'll open it up for questions and answers. So a couple expectations today, um, you know, we're all working or most of us are working remotely from our homes. And so we ask that you all participate as much as you're able to. And joined by audio and video so we all feel as connected as much as possible and um, we want you to share your ex your experience and ask questions we definitely want this to be more of a conversation um, and less of a, a talking at you um, type of environment um, and as Morgan mentioned feel free to use the chat feature and then um, if you're not speaking or not sharing um, your experience um, we just ask that you mute your audio um, to limit distractions for yourself and others. Like I was sharing with Morgan and Lisa earlier, my dogs have decided to act up and, and bark at every little noise. So we've got them a couple doors down and I'll be sure to mute myself when I'm not speaking. So, all right, well, any questions so far before we get started or before we continue? No, okay, cool. All right, so now that you're admitted, um, these are some next steps for you all to take. Um, so since you've been admitted, you should have received your admission letter uh, via email or um, even um, a copy or a printed copy of the letter. Um, you'll want to um, activate your One Tech student portal. Um, from here, you'll be able to apply for housing and, and select a meal plan if that's something that you need or something that's required of you. And then starting August 1st, you'll be able to purchase your parking permit. And you can do a lot of other things in One Tech. Like, Lisa, what are some other things that you can think of? Oh, my gosh. Um, there's, there's honestly so much. I mean, um, mm -hmm. you know, 
you can access it if you have financial aid you can access um, your financial aid status um, you can find out anything you need to do if you've missed it you know any forms or anything of that nature you can access your student account um, you can look at your uh, unofficial transcript you can I mean there's honestly there's so much you can do um, and you can even rearrange it um, into a, a format that works for you so that you're always seeing the things that are most important to you. Um, you'll also get, can get uh, relevant um, news or information about things going on at Arkansas Tech or things you may need to know. Um, so really, I, I feel like OneTech is super important, getting in the habit of logging into OneTech very routinely and checking to see if there's anything there. Um, that you need to address or uh, information that you may need. So, and I feel like sometimes that's one of those things that sometimes takes students a little while to learn. That if you can learn that up front, it'll actually cut down a lot of on a lot of headaches <laughs> for you. So, right. yeah, One Tech is kind of like the one stop that is a student, and you'll be able to find everything that you need to access, whether that's the Tech A to Z, which we'll show you here in a little bit. Um, or, you know, other resources like Lisa had mentioned. So next, after you've activated that, um, you'll want to schedule your academic advising appointment um, so you can get registered for classes. So here we have it broken down um, a couple different ways. So if you have less than 60 credit hours, you're advised by our academic advising center and their contact information is there for you. If you have more than 60 credit hours, then you're advised by your academic department, um, which you can find that information on our website. Um, and then there's also a link to the academic departments in your admission letter. So be sure to reference that. And then um, if you are um, majoring in any of the College of ETEX programs, the Bachelors of Arts in Organizational Leadership, the Bachelors of Applied Science, or the Bachelor of Professional Studies, you'll be advised through um, the College of ETEC and we will send their phone number there. So right now, um, the best way to contact um, eTech is by ps at atu.edu. Um, and then once you're assigned an advisor, um, they'll reach out to you or you're welcome to contact them first um, to get that meeting scheduled and, and get that squared away. So, any questions about academic advising? All right, well, hearing none, we'll move on. Um, the next thing that you'll wanna take care of, um, especially if you're receiving any type of scholarship um, or aid from the university is completing your FAFSA um, for financial aid purposes. Um, if you're receiving a scholarship or any type of aid, you wanna make sure that you have any of the documents that they've requested to their office by August 1st for the upcoming academic year. Um, next, you'll want to um, contact student accounts. So like Lisa had mentioned, you can access your student account and see your balance through the OneTech student portal. Um, our student accounts office um, is happy to work with you um, if you need um, to get set up on a payment plan or anything like that. Um, so they're an important office um, to contact and follow up with. And then, um, getting your tech ID. So you'll be able to access a lot of different um, features, um, buildings on campus, things of that nature, um, with your tech ID that you can get. Um, currently campus is closed until August 3rd. Um, and so once um, our campus reopens, you'll be able to pick up your tech ID in our card office. All right, Lisa. Yeah, so we wanted to list, you know, kind of a, a very, compressed um, listing of offices or important offices at Arkansas Tech. I would suggest you might even screenshot this page um, or make notes of it somewhere. Um, and the reason we felt like it was important to list these is because um, sometimes, especially as a new student, um, you can get really overwhelmed um, in the beginning. And it's super duper helpful to know who to contact for specific questions. Um, so, I mean, obviously the tech, from the tech website, um, there, you're going to have tabs across the top and as a current student, there's going to be a current student tab. Click on that. It's going to list, um, there's several options. You can get to your one tech there. You can get to Blackboard there if you're taking online classes. 
Um, there's, there is the Tech A to Z link that's listed there, and that is just an alphabetical listing of all the offices on campus, makes it super easy to navigate and find the office that you need. Um, financial aid, um, you know, if you're receiving any kind of financial aid at all, um, you're going to definitely want to keep um, their contact information with you because what you'll find often is the tendency is to go to your academic advisor, especially if you're an over 60 credit hour student and you work closely with them. Um, but your or your academic advisor is not, not a financial aid coordinator. So while we might have basic information to get, we don't, we don't know your particular situation. So we're going to refer you back to financial aid. So I mean, they're super helpful and they reply super quick. So, you know, good to know their, um, their uh, contact information so that you can find out specifics dealing with your financial aid. Student accounts, hopefully you don't have to deal with them too many times. <laughs> as, a, as a general rule, you're just going to be paying your bill there, you know, so that's going to be your tuition um, if you're getting a, a parking tag, um, things like that, things of that nature, where you, what you're going to pay through student accounts. Um, you can access all of that through your One Tech 2. They do have embedded links. You can just click through, get to your payment, you know, set up payment plans, do all of those things that you need to do um, right there. And then, of course, the library um, is a really great resource. Um, and as you move, progress through your classes, whether you're online student or on campus student, um, they're equally great. So if you're on campus, you can, you know, go to the library and, and um, access all of their resources there. And then as an online student, they have massive archives of information um, for you to use um, in your classes as you're doing research papers and whatnot. So, and I, but I feel like honestly, um, getting comfortable with that, especially if you're going to look online, get comfortable with that online library so that you don't um, wait until you're in, you know, panic mode, <laughs> trying to get an assignment done. And then you go and you're, you're really uncomfortable, which just adds to your stress. So kind of spend a little time just digging around and figuring out what the resources are there. Um, I think it's super helpful, you know, if you do that kind of on the front end. So. And, and hey, any questions, anytime, feel free to unmute and ask. Okay. Oops. <laughs> this was fun, wasn't it, Sabrina? Okay. Um, and then just also, and I kind of address this, you know, if you run into problems or um, you're just super stressed about a particular something, don't wait and don't, don't let it uh, turn into a full fledged um, issue. Go ahead and reach out to somebody. I think one of the things that you'll discover at tech is um, everybody here really, really, we really want you to succeed. Uh, and we're very open to helping you and to um, directing you. Um, if we don't know the answer to directing you to who can help you, um, there are tons of resources. Again, I know it can be overwhelming, but um, you can always reach out to your academic advisor, especially if you're in the, your upper division 60 plus hour scenario. Um, or you can reach out to Sabrina or I, we're both happy to help you if you're not sure um, what direction to go, what office to talk to, whatever. More than happy to answer questions for you um, in that regard. Um, it, it is important to know policies and procedures. Um, the course catalog is a great resource, and I'll just tell you super quick um, that you can access that through that Tech A to Z link, you know, by clicking on that and then just go to the letter C, find the course catalog. The reason that's important is from there, you can navigate to your particular degree program um, and it lists course descriptions, you know, all kinds of information. So if you're ever curious, hey, can I take, you know, this 3000 junior level class I'm really interested in, something I'd really love to take, you can go just check it out. You can read a description about that class to see what it really is. And you can also find out if there's any prerequisite requirements that you need to have met prior. So it's just kind of a, a great resource for understanding your particular degree program, um, what it entails, you know, and, and just getting some good information. Student handbook, I think is kind of obvious. Um, you want to be familiar with that so that you make sure that you are following um, campus guidelines um, and don't run into any problem there, you know, from everything from, you know, when you need to pay, 
you know, your student accounts, what happens if you don't, to your hang tag, you, you know, park, proper parking if you're on campus, to student IDs and whatnot. Um, I kind of went over who to contact already. Um, I, and Sabrina, you can pop in if I'm wrong, but um, your academic advisor is 60, 60 hours and under. Um, are, am I wrong in saying they're, they're typically not going to be your go-to? They, they can be, but they are advising a lot of students, so it's a slightly different scenario. Um, Sabrina and I are always both available um, if you need to send an email or just have a question. Right now, we all, like she said, are working virtually from home, so email is the best way to reach us right now, and we're all checking our emails very regularly, like mm -hmm. all the time. Um, and then once you get over your 60 hour threshold and you do have a, a, an academic advisor, whether it's in your department or if you're with eTech, one of us, then oftentimes um, they're going to be a good resource for you too. Um, so I think the biggest thing that I would tell students, especially um, somebody that's coming back to school after having been out for a while, is um, just don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask people for help. Um, don't wait till you're in panic mode um, to reach out to somebody, even if it's just a technology question. You know, there's great resources on campus even for that. So, you have anything to add to that, Sabrina? Sorry, it, <laughs> when I'm in presentation mode, it takes away my controls. So. Of course. <laughs> Um, no, I would just reiterate what Lisa said, you know, being, um, you know, being comfortable asking questions and, and asking for help, you know, we're, we're kind of all in this together. And, um, and again, as Lisa mentioned, you know, here at Tech, we, we want you to, um, to persist through graduation and, you know, we're, we're here to help you, you know, we've been through college you know, some of us a couple times, a couple different places. And so we, we truly understand what it's like to make that transition to, to be um, in a different type of or a different demographic of the traditional students. And so, you know, we just want to help you um, as much as we can. But we, we need to know that you need help so we can help you. So now um, we want to open it up um, to questions or, or conversations, um, you know, that you all may have um, being a non-traditional student and um, maybe what some, what are some issues that you've seen or that you're experiencing right now and, you know, really just to see if you can stump me and Lisa. So mostly Lisa, she's been here doing this for a lot longer than I have. And so it's always fun to see what questions we get and, you know, if we're going to be able to answer those questions. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, so as a non-traditional student, what did you struggle with the most coming back to school? Um, I think particularly my first semester, well, number one, I had two kids. So time management was huge. Um, figuring out how to uh, manage uh, being a good student, being a good mom, and also having to, having to hold the job down. Um, I, but I think my first semester, it was really just um, relearning how to study, honestly, more than anything else. Um, I felt like that first semester, I really had to just kind of, it's, you know, it's like exercising for the first time again after a long time. It, it takes a little bit to build that muscle back up. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and don't panic. I think that was my other thing. I learned don't panic because what may seem like a huge obstacle right now, if you'll just slow down and, and take your time, you can probably work your way through it, whether it's a class or, or whatever it may be. So those are probably the biggest things for me. Thank you. And learning, you know, to drink a lot of coffee and not get a lot of sleep <laughs> <laughs> for a while. But I worked in the evenings. So I went to school during the day and worked in the evenings and had two kids. So You got it done. Got your bachelor's degree from it, so. I did, I did. And then I did go back, you know, like so many of us at Tech and got my master's degree. Um, I did that online, so I also had that experience. When I was got my bachelor's degree, I was a traditional student, so I was coming to campus. Mm -hmm. um, and then in my master's, I did that online, you know, while working full-time and still had the two kids, although they were older. <laughs> so. Awesome. Well, everybody, we've got about five minutes left. 
anybody has questions for Lisa or Sabrina? If you have a question, you can either unmute yourself or type it up in the group chat. So I have just a really quick question. One that I always like to ask is, what is one thing that you wish more students knew about at ATU? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I would say for me, of course, I work, I work exclusively with online students. Um, I think I wish more students knew um, that their advisor is a resource for them. And I think often they don't know that. So um, for online students, I think that's super important to understand that your advisor is your advocate. So. Mine's kind of broad in that I really wish knew more about or utilize more of our campus resources um, or knowing what you get at so whether that's free admission to all of our sporting events um, you know for you and your families or um, even some of the the campus resources like the health and wellness center um, you know and career services um, so those are those are the three our, our athletic teams our health and wellness center that also includes a counseling center and um, career services. So those are definitely resources that are that you're already paying for as a student. And I really wish more students um, would utilize those services. You know, those are just going to help you out in the long run. I chime in to add to that because I totally agree. <laughs> oh yeah, Meredith is yeah, Meredith is here. <laughs> she can. I popped in a few minutes late. Um, yeah. thing that I hear all the time that students don't know about, we've discussed this in our office, student discounts. Yes. <laughs> there are student discounts available. All you have to do is have your ID. So be sure to take advantage of those. And then a little bit more serious note, this came to reality yesterday and admitted to ATU. A lot of different departments offer training opportunities. Our diversity and inclusion office offers a couple different training opportunities. Our um, public safety office offers opportun training opportunities. I think just ask around and we're learning too, but I think the more you know, the more you can take advantage. And there's so many opportunities that are included in your tuition to do now while it's free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good question. All right, awesome. we have two more minutes if we have time. Two minutes. Quick question. Does anybody want to share about your experience as a non-traditional student so far? That's what I'm always interested to hear is students' stories and their paths. I get to hear a lot of that um, with transfer students, um, but I'm always, I always like to hear that from, a, from as many students as possible. I just have to say I'm enjoying uh, Kevante's uh, background in glasses. He seems to be in the tropics right now. Yes, I'm so jealous. <laughs> I love those virtual backgrounds. Those are the best. All right, guys. Well, it looks like time is up. So thank you so much for um, coming to see us and joining us for this session. And remember, if you need anything, just contact us. Um, Lisa and Sabrina both have their emails and contact information up there. And yeah, so thank you guys for joining us. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. So, bye. Bye. Welcome to tech. <laughs>